Howdy, y'all. Thank you for joining us today for this playthrough of Marvel Champions. It's not going to be the Galaxy's Most Wanted. Sorry, I just didn't have the other books on hand. But this is going to be a playthrough. It's actually going to be me trying out my Doctor Strange deck. Um, I built it protection, I believe. Yes, I built a protection. Wanted to make sure because I just built the deck last week, but I wasn't didn't really get a chance to mess with it too much. So do a little fine tuning on it. I cut most of that out as I gave it a good shuffle. Let's bring up the randomizer and see what we're going to go against. All right, let's go ahead and hit this and see what it does. Looks like we're doing Absorbing Man and None Shall Pass with Master of Time and Bomb Scare. Sorry to gave this a few shuffles. Never played against Absorbing Man again before, so we'll see how this goes. I've already mixed in Doctor Strange's Obligation here. But it is stage one and stage two of Absorbing Man, so this will be new to me. Uh, never done Master of Time, which was one of the side ones in there, so we'll try that one out. And I know on the back of this thing, it just recommends uh, the standard and then one modular where it recommends Hydra Patrol. I decided to hit the randomizer. And basically, I always throw the standard in. I, I always want the capability that your... A villain could show up by your arch nemesis and I understand well that the standard didn't get shuffled in then they don't but I think the standard should be in all of them it does make the deck quite thick I just like I said I like the I like the you're an arch arch I think feel like your arch villain should always be able to show up so I feel like the standard should always be shuffled in I haven't found anything that says whether you always do that or not I guess I should do a check I won't waste just time on that I'll look that up afterwards I just feel like it's something that should always happen. But anyways, all right. I've gave Dr. Strange's deck quite a few shuffles. This might be kind of rough. I mean, he could do some damage, but I don't know how much damage stuff I actually have in his deck to make it to where I can just keep doing stuff. And I actually wanted to try to build and try out like some of the characters I didn't really enjoy as much. But kind of got short on time tonight, so I decided to just go ahead and throw this one on the table and see what's up. But it's cool. I'm going to be able to try it out against somebody new. So I don't know what to expect. So it says Zord Man gets the trait of each environment in play. Okay. So sorry about the uh, little darkness in some areas. I don't know what was going on with my glare tonight. And then like I said, I bought something, but it's not really helping with the glare. I'm just going to have to go ahead and invest in something. That lights up a lot better than these things do, apparently. All right. Anyways. Let's get to it. All right, if this is your first time to join me on one of these, um, welcome. I will, unfortunately, be boring people who watch these all the time as I will go through the first few steps and at least cover the basics. That way, if it's your first time watching, you can at least kind of follow along and see if it's something you want to jump into. I do enjoy this game a lot. Um, all right, so right off the bat, let's set Doctor Strange to his 10 hit points. Because Doctor Strange is going to get 10 hit points here. And he's got to have a hand size of 5. We'll put my deck there. Yeah. I'm going to have it off camera only because I want to save more space for stuff. Just in case I do have it. But we'll keep my hit points at least on camera. But it's because he has this extra deck. And I want to make sure this one's always on camera. So right off the bat we have his Winds of Watoom available. And I'm going to put that one right here. That's the reason I wanted to have the other deck save some space here. All right. And then we have my character card. Yeah. Put it right here. All right. Oh, he starts an art. Yeah, he starts in alter ego form. Which actually, it's the hit points are the same. It's just his hand size is different. His hand size is six. So... Guess I should have waited to do this because I'm pretty sure the OP kit that gives you the full art strange is coming out soon, but eh. Let's get this over with. We already got to go and start it. All right. 
So the last setup for me after doing all that is now I need to draw my hand size of six. So I draw my six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And like I said, I, I did build this, but it was, it was really just my Captain America deck that I just kind of took apart, made some changes that I felt went with Doctor Strange, but I didn't peruse through every single card. This is kind of the trial to see if I should change some stuff. All right. All right, so now I am completely fully set up, which the first part of Doctor, Doctor Strange stuff, Stephen Strange says, begins the game with the Invocation deck. And then that's where just basically he has this five card deck. On the top is the spell that if he had, if it's something says he can cast his spell, he can do that. And then that discards. And if this deck ever runs out, he just reshuffles it. So it's basically the same five. It's just when they're available. All right. Let's see if we have any setup for Absorbing Man here. It says Absorbing Man gains the trait of each environment in play. And then tells you what the content should have been. Like I said, I did. You saw me hit the randomizer. So we're playing with. Master of Time, Bomb Scare, Standard, and then does seem like there's an awful lot in there, so maybe you can't always have the Standard in there, but alright. Setup. Discard cards from the Encounter deck until an environment is discarded. Put that card into play and shuffle the Encounter discard pile into the... Guess I should have done that before? So, yep. Let's look for an environment. There's Treachery. Treachery. All right. Well, at least this isn't all going to start out just discarded. Oops, sorry. Minion. Oh, my goodness. Just hitting a lot of treacheries. Not really hitting an environment yet. Don't know how many are in play. Oh my goodness. The side scheme. All right, let's speed this up. And of course, after I pick it up, we hit the first environment. So we got Snowy Hillside. It's gonna start in play, which gives him a forced response. That is, after Absorb Man makes an undefended attack against you, place one threat on the main scheme. Two threat instead if there are five or more delay counters on the main scheme. All right. Has Surge on this. I'm assuming this is so that if you hit it as your uh, encounter, it just surges. Because I don't know why you would just surge off the bat. Oh, we'll read into that while I shuffle this back together again. Okay, I went ahead and looked it up. Sorry, I decided to go ahead and do a different setup here. I wanted to get y'all some more light. So I had to move this around because that glare is going to be a problem right here. Anyways, I went ahead and gave him his 14 hit points. Uh, this is the one that comes into play. The surge effect, from what I can understand, should only matter if this is revealed during the encounter step. So it shouldn't make me play a card. I kind of figured that, but I wanted to make sure. Especially when I'm doing something where I'm showing y'all play through. I don't want to do something and have y'all playing wrong because I did something dumb. All right. And if I did that wrong, I'm still doing it wrong. I just, I'm pretty sure that's the way I understand it. It's only during the encounter step, if that's revealed, that it would get surge. And if I did that wrong, oh well. Because I've got a feeling it's going to be something that's going to happen the whole game. All right, so we did that and already shuffled this deck up. So we flipped this over to his other side. And this is his main scheme he's going to be trying to pull off. And it's got a forced response. After resolving step one of the villain phase, place one delay counter here. And then the forced interrupt. When an environment enters play, discard each other environment card that is in play. So there's only going to be one environment in play at a time. But this does start with stub threat already on it. Because basically what's going to happen, it's going to add one threat per turn. But it starts with two per player already on it. And 
So if this is your first time, what's going to happen is I'm going to be trying to stop Absorbing Man from doing his nun shell pass. Which I don't remember seeing the story, so I guess it's just he's in the way. All right, nun shell pass. All right, he wins. I win if I can knock him out two times. As you saw, right now he starts with 14 hit points. I know it's hard to see. It's down here. But he starts with 14 hit points per number of player. Which, in this case, I'm solo, so it's only 14, 14 times 1. So he starts with 14 hit points. And when I knock him out of his 14 hit points, he's going to go to his phase 2. And that's going to give him some more hit points. And we're going to try to knock him out then. A second time. And that makes us win. He wins if he can pull off his scheme, which means he gets enough threat here to equal the number here, which is 12 per number of players. So that means, in this case, if he gets 12 threat on his scheme, he pulls it off, which is, if this stage is completed, the players lose the game. So he's trying to pull off his scheme. And he's already started with two threat on there. Or he wins if he can knock me out of my 10 hit points. So we're going to see if we can stop him. Let's see if we can bring Absorbing Man down. So it starts with my turn. And I've already drawn my cards. And normally I would get to do choose to do a mulligan here. But I'm ready to just get right into it. So we'll see if I can figure this deck out, this hand out. All right, so the way this works is I basically I go through actions. And I'll try to explain out some of the actions. One of the actions is I can do anything that's on one of my cards. It says action here, which in this case, this one says as an action, I can discard the top card of the invocation deck, which means I can get rid of this card. But I kind of want that card. It's a nice one. It lets me draw extra cards and it's free to cast. So I think I'm gonna leave that one there for now. Not do that action. One of my other actions are, is I can flip once per turn. I can flip from alter ego to hero form or from hero to alter ego form. So I'm going to go ahead and use that action to flip to Doctor Strange's hero form. And then, now I have this action available where it says I can exhaust Doctor Strange and, play, and pay the cost of the top card of the invocation deck. And then I resolve the special ability on that card. So, I'm going to use the action to exhaust Doctor Strange. And I'm going to pay the cost. And the way this works, to pay this cost... If you want to pay the cost of a card, you look right here at the cost of the card. In this case, it's zero. But if there was a number there, you would have to pay whatever it shows on the bottom of these cards as resources. And discarding those cards pay, gives you that resource to pay that cost. In this case, it is zero. So I pay zero resources. I get to do it, which is draw three cards and then place this card into the, de the deck discard pile. So, and I'm going to keep this one right here so I don't get it mixed up with my other one. But I move it there, but it lets me draw three cards. One, two, three. As another action, I can choose to play cards from my hand. In this case, I want to play Luke Cage. He costs four resources. So, one, two, and then this one... It would be three, but it says double the number of resources this card generates while paying for a protection card. This is a protection card. So one, two, three, four. And that lets me put Luke Cage into play. Now, when Luke Cage comes into play, it says this character enters play with a tough status card. What a tough status card is, is the next time that this character would be dealt damage, he instead just removes this tough status card and reduces the damage to nothing. Well, instead he just removes that. All right. So he comes into play with that. He also comes into play with five hit points on him. And I like to put their hit points on them. I know these are damage counters. I like to do it the opposite way because of other cards. And if you've seen my playthroughs, you see why. There is one card I play with a lot that... It just gets a little confusing having multiple counters on it. I just would rather just put their hit points on them. 
I want to play another card. I got Iron Fist here. He costs four. So, one, two, three, four. And I get to put Iron Fist into play. And what he does is when he comes into play, he, I put two Mystic Counters on him. And then as a response, when Iron Fist attacks an enemy, I may remove one Mystic Counter from him to stun that enemy and deal one damage to it. So, Iron Fist comes into play. He comes into play with three hit points on him. And two Mystic Counters. Another action that I could do normally, if I wasn't tapped or exhausted here, is you can choose to do what's called a basic action with one of your guys. So, as a basic action, I could exhaust Doctor Strange to thwart the scheme. And what this would do is I would come up here and I would remove threat equal to that number from whatever scheme I decide to thwart. So in this case, if I exhausted Doctor Strange to thwart, I would get rid of two th uh, threat off of a scheme. Or I can exhaust him to attack and then I would do this much damage to whichever minion, villain, or bad guy I decide to attack. Defense is when they are attacking me, I can choose to exhaust and then after the attack, I would reduce the damage dealt to me by two. And then I'm going to go ahead and talk about this one on the other side, just in case you are new. Sorry if you aren't. On the other side, they have a recovery. And what that is, is I, if I was on this other side, I could exhaust him to recover that many hit points back to, uh, back to up to my max. But I'm exhausted, so I cannot do that. The only reason I went through that explanation is it's easier to explain the allies then. So first off, you can have up to three allies in the play. And the way the allies work is pretty similar to your main characters, except for they don't have a defense, which means when they defend, they just take the damage straight to the face. But also they have these what's called consequential stars. So when they do decide to thwart or attack, after that, they have to take whatever, however many consequential stars it is in conjunction to whichever action they did. With that being said, with Iron Fist, I'm going to choose to attack Absorbing Man. So I exhaust him to attack Absorbing Man for two damage. So Absorbing Man takes two damage. I always go backwards on this thing for some reason. And then also, as a response, when Iron Fist attacks an enemy, I get to remove one Mystic Counter from him. I stun that enemy and deal one damage to it. So what stun is, is whenever someone gets stunned, this card goes on them and the next time that character would attack, instead of attacking, they just discard this card. So it basically cancels out one of their attacks. So Iron Fist is going to stun Absorbing Man and then do a damage. And technically I should have done that before doing the other two damage, but decided to just do that in that order. All right. So now, after Iron Fist is done attacking, he has to take one consequential damage. And then now, I'm going to have Luke Cage choose to attack Absorbing Man for two. Taking him to nine. And then Luke Cage takes one consequential damage. When you have no more actions, or in this case, I have no more cards in hand, I have no more actions that are available to me, I choose to go to my end step now. Oh, actually, this would have been revealed immediately. I don't know why. Well, well, I have no way to cast it. You have to have a way to target it, but I do have another zero-cost spell on the top. And it lets me change any one status card, which a status card is like this tough, stunned, and the only other one is one called Confusing, or Confusion, which stops thwarting and scheming. Like I talked about thwart here, and then the bad guy will get to what they do when they scheme. But this lets me change any one status card into any other status card, which can be pretty cool. If they stun one of my guys, I can turn it into a tough. But anyways, like I said, I go to my end step. So when I go to my end step, the first thing I do is I draw up to my hand size, which now, like remember, I started with six. Now my starting hand size is five. 
So draw my five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And then I unexhaust all my guys. Or unexhaust all my cards, I should say. Now we go to the bad guys phase, our turn. And during our round, however you want to call it. First thing you do on them is you look and see how much threat gets added to the scheme. In this case, one threat gets added to the scheme per number of players. So one threat added to the scheme. Next, you check, you check to see, we're going to ignore the stun for now, but you check to see what, it depends on what form I am in as to what action the villain is going to do. If I am in alter ego form, then they're going to scheme, which means they'll add threat to their main scheme. If I am in hero form, then they will attack me, and that's when I would have to choose to defend. So in this case, Doctor Strange is in hero form. So he would choose to attack me, but he is stunned. So it says the next time this character would attack, discard this status card instead. So he just removes the status, the stun effect, and that cancels out his attack. Now I did forget one forced response here. It says after resolving step one of the villain phase, which was adding a threat here, I was supposed to place one delay counter on here. I'm just gonna place it right here for now. And I'm assuming what these are all about is like I noticed on the snowy hillside, it says two threat instead of instead if there are five or more delay counters on the main scheme. So basically it sounds like the environments get better or worse in which way you look at it, the more delay counters are on here. So I got to take them out fast. Otherwise these things get a lot beefier. All right. So after all the villain, the villain has done his action, then any minions that are in play would do their attacks and or scheme in the same fashion. In this case, there's no minions. So now we go to the encounter phase. Each player is dealt one encounter card. And then after everyone has dealt one encounter card, they play all encounter cards that are on them. In this case, I only have the one, so we play this one encounter card, which is Steel Kick. It is a treachery. It says when revealed, and since I'm still in hero form, when revealed hero, I take three indirect damage, four indirect damage instead if Absorbing Man has the metal trait. He does not have the metal trait, so I have to take three indirect damage. So indirect damage is kind of annoying. Sorry, I just realized I put that down in the glare. So indirect damage, three indirect damage means I have to spread three damage amongst all my characters. So in this case, it means each of these characters are going to take one. And what's annoying about it is it means this tough goes away because of one damage. Because one damage dealt to Luke Cage, instead of damage, the first time damage we dealt with him, tough goes away. One damage to Iron Fist. And then one damage to Doctor Strange. After the encounter phase. Normally what would happen is the first player marker would pass between characters, but in this case I'm a solo player so I just go, and that's about it. We just go back and forth until either I knock him out both times or he knocks me out or pulls off his scheme. So we go back to the back for top of my turn. I'm going to pay one to put this upgrade into play. So there's the one I pay. And let's me put this upgrade into play, which I put under any player's control. It gives my hero plus one thwart, plus one attack, and plus one defense. But then as a forced interrupt, when the round ends, I discard this. And the round is actually at the end of my at the end of the villain turn. So I take my turn, the villain takes their turn, and then the round ends. So this action will let me be able to have a plus to defense also. So put that into play. So now I'm plus one all three of these stats. I'm going to exhaust Doctor Strange to thwart the scheme, which now is two plus one is three. So that means I get rid of three threat off the main off of the scheme I choose. I choose the main scheme of None Shall Pass. 
I'm going to have Luke Cage exhaust to do two damage to Absorbing Man. And he takes his consequential damage. I'm going to have Iron Fist exhaust. And then as a response, he's going to discard his Mystic Counter to stun and do a damage to Absorbing Man. So he'll do the one damage. Plus the two, so I'm just going to go ahead and do all three damage now. Plus put the stun on Absorbing Man. And then his three damage, taking him to four. And then that KOs Iron Fist. And then I'm going to choose to play Momentum Shift, which is an event. I guess I should have mentioned that before. These events are like one-time things that you do. I paid two to do it. And now... I'm doing Momentum Shift, which says as a hero action, which means I have to be in hero form, which I am. I attack, I heal two damage from my hero, and then deal two damage to an enemy. So I heal up to my, I only heal one, because I'm only missing one, but it does heal me up to ten. And then I do two damage to Absorbing Man. Putting him at two. I'm doing a lot more damage than I thought I would. I have no more cards in hand. Normally, if you do have cards in hand, when you go to your end step, you can choose to discard any number you want to so that you can get rid of, room, make room to be able to draw new cards. In this case, I have no cards in hand. We go to my end step. So I draw up to my hand size of five. One, two, three, four, five. Unexhaust. Back to the top, add a threat to the scheme, add a delay counter. Absorbing Man checks, I am in hero form. So Absorbing Man's going to go and try to attack me. I didn't take into account that stun was still gonna be there. I was thinking of getting rid of it with this Vapors of Valtor and just realized Doctor Strange was tapped down so I wasn't gonna be able to do that. Instead of attacking me, he just becomes unstunned. So he is gone for his turn. There is no minions. So we go to the encounter phase. Deal me one encounter card. Now we flip it up and see what it is. And it is the displaced soldier. It is a minion that will come into play. Normally the minions come in engaged with, your, with whoever flipped up the encounter card. In this case, I'm just playing solo so I'm just going to keep them all up here. Sorry, I'm definitely avoiding this area. I gotta figure a way to get over that glare. But anyways, so we have the time displaced soldier here. And they have Incite 1 and then Surge. So what Incite 1 means is Incite means it's gonna add one threat to the main scheme. And it was Incite 1, so I just added one. And then Surge means that if this was revealed during the encounter phase, then that means we deal ourselves another encounter card. And I'm going to take care of that here in a second. Let me go ahead and put his three hit points on the time display soldier. And then my other encounter card from the surge is caught off guard. When revealed, I discard an upgrade or support I control. If no cards were discarded this way, this card gains surge. Well, I mean, I didn't get to use it anyways, but... I do have an upgrade that was going to discard the end of the round anyway, so it goes away. So this card does not gain Surge, and it is done. So for my encounter, a Time Displaced Soldier showed up and engaged me. We go back to the beginning of my turn. Let me look at Doctor Strange's other side. Okay, he just lets you get rid of the spell. I should have done that last turn. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and bring Clea out. I'll pay two. And what she does is she has an interrupt that when Clea is defeated, so basically all her hit points go away, I shuffle her back into my deck. She's one of the ones I've been considering if I want to keep in here. I like that she can stay in your deck. All right, I'm actually going to go ahead and thwart the scheme and get rid of the two thread off of there. 
And then I'm going to flip to my alter ego form and get rid of this and hope that the next one's something where I can just burn through him. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing that as an action because it says discard the top card of the invocation deck, which I just did. So it reveals the seven rings of Ragador. Ragador? Ragador. So I'm debating. I could have Luke Cage and Clea defeat the time display soldier. But I could also just have Luke Cage knock out Absorbing Man and get to his second phase to where we know what we're working with there. And just try to burn him down. In this case, I think I'm just going to try to burn him down. So let's hope I didn't make a mistake here. Luke Cage is going to exhaust and attack Absorbing Man. Knocking him out of on this stage. Yeah, that's what I worried about. That it was going to up his scheme. I kind of figured it would because of the, the way his main scheme works. is none shall pass. So I figured that's what it was going to do. So first things first, let's give him his new hit points because I usually always forget that. Which is 15. And then it says when revealed if super absorbing power is in play, which I don't see anything that says it is, deal one encounter card to each player. Otherwise, search the encounter deck and discard pile for super absorbing power and reveal it. It's not in the discard pile, so... Alright, so what super absorbing power is, is it is a side scheme. Oh, stupid glare. So it is a side scheme. And that should be everything you need to see, kind of. So what it's going to do is a side scheme is basically a scheme that he's trying to pull off also, but it's going to make it harder. It starts with a number of threat equal to the number of players. So in this case, it's going to have three threat on there. And then, basically, Absorbed Man gains the Ice, Metal, Stone, and Wood trait. So remember earlier it said if he has the Metal trait, then this would happen. Well, sorry, I'm trying to prop this up a little bit to where the glare. There we go. All right. So basically, yeah, he's now got all those traits, and as long as I keep that scheme there, he's going to have those traits and be doing more stuff. So I either have to thwart all three of that off of there, which interesting. I mean, I guess I would have been better off attacking with Doctor Strange. Sorry, I just gave you some shuffles. Like attacking with Luke Cage, flip to this next one, attack with Doctor Strange, go ahead and start weakening him down. But I was worried that this scheme was going to go up, so it's going to add some stuff to this thing. I'm just going to have Clea go ahead and exhaust. Oh, I forgot to do the consequential damage to Luke Cage. I'm going to have Clea go ahead and exhaust and just attack Absorbing Man for another one. So we can get him down. And then she takes her consequential damage. So we go to my end step. I have two cards in hand. Like I said, I can choose to discard any. So I'm going to choose to discard that one and keep this one in my hand. Of course, this one really ain't going to help me against with that one. I was hoping it would have been my combat spell. If it would have been my combat spell, this lets you basically double the spell. So you could cast it and then basically recast it. So then like now I could just burn him down. But... I think I am going to go ahead and discard that. I may regret it. And we're going to go ahead and draw up to my full hand size of six since I have no cards in hand now. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. We on exhaust. We add a threat to the scheme. Now, since I am in alter ego form, Absorb Man's going to scheme, and it's the same way as he does with the attack. He's going to be dealt a boost card. And, oh, we just keep hitting these boosts. If there are five or more delay counters on the main scheme, take one indirect damage. I did forget to add a delay counter this turn, but there's not five or more. So... So we don't have to take the indirect damage. So 
So he's just going to scheme for two. And then I'm going to go ahead and the time display soldier is going to scheme for one. So we're just going to add three because two plus the one is three. Then we get dealt an encounter card. We do it and it's assault, which is I'm in alter ego form. So this card gains surge. So it gains surge. So we get dealt another encounter card, which is icy grip. When revealed, you are stunned. If absorbing man has the ice trait, take two indirect damage. So I am stunned, which means the next time I would attack instead, I just get rid of the stun. Too bad I got rid of that vapors now. That would have been nice. And he does have the ice trait because of the snowy hillside. Plus his super absorbing power. So I have to take two indirect damage. I'll do one to Doctor Strange. And the other one to Clea. So does she shuffles because her, her, her interrupt is she shuffles back into my deck. So that was all the encounter cards. And that was a pretty bad round in my opinion. I kind of messed up a lot of things I had planned. A lot of it was there was a card in my hand that I just misread when I put it in the deck. It was better with Captain America and not so good with Doctor Strange. Which was Get Behind Me. Because with Get Behind Me, it basically made it to where I could have canceled out one of those cards that got played, the Treachery, but then it makes the bad guy attack me. In solo play, that kind of sucks because there is... He can't... It's a hero interrupt, so I can only play it when I'm a hero. But as Captain America, you wanted people to attack you because you had retaliation with your shield and all that stuff. So, Back to the top of my turn. All right, for my first action, I'm going to do Stephen Strange's action, which is discard the top card of the Invocation deck. I wanted to put toughness on these guys, on my guys. I'm just going to choose not to. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Let's see what this reveals. It reveals my Crimson Bands of Sidorak. Stun an enemy and deal seven damage to it. Ooh. I'm going to play Mystical Studies for one resource. And what it lets me do, I have to be an alter ego at form, but I search my deck and discard pile for a Doctor Strange card and add it to my hand. I'm going in my discard pile to get the Master of the Mystical Arts back into my hand. It says shuffle my deck. Um, I'll give it a few shuffles. I didn't do anything to the deck, so oh, except for now, throw some cards around as I cheat. All right. Uh, I think the rest of this have to be in hero form, so I will switch to my hero form. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh, I thought I was going to knock him out this turn. I keep taking the thing, one thing into account. Actually, this stun is the reason I'm not going to be able to do it, but that's fine. I want to bring out the Eye of Agamotto. So this is a nice card because it counts as two resource. So I have the Eye of Agamotto now. And what it is, is, if I'm in hero form as a resource, I can exhaust this to generate a wild resource. So it's basically like exhausting it to pay one to pay for help pay for something. Yeah, that's where it sucks. But I have to do it here. I'm going to choose to exhaust Doctor Strange to attack Absorbing Man. Of course, instead of attacking, I just become unstunned. And then since I'm exhausted, I just don't have a way to unexhaust it. But I am going to pay the one with the Eye of Agamotto to play Master of the Mystic Arts, which says pay the printed cost of the top card of the Invocation deck, resolve its special ability, and place it back on top of its Invocation deck face up. Oh, I wasn't going to be able to do this anyways. My Aggie math just doesn't let me count. So I can choose to play this, and then it stays there, which I want to leave it there because... Seven damage and stunning them seems good. So there's my two to pay for that. And that lets me do stun an enemy and then deal seven damage and then place this card into a discard pile. But the other card said, no, I do not. Well, actually it says I do. I just put it right back on top of the deck face up. So I do seven damage to absorbing man. 
putting him at seven. And then it stuns him. And sure, why not? I don't think I need to, but I'll have Luke Cage attack the time display soldier for no other reason other than he's in the way. And then Luke Cage takes one consequential damage. And then I have no more cards in hand, nothing else I want to do, so we unexhaust everything. Oh, well, actually, we draw up to my hand size of five. One, two, three, four, five. Then we unexhaust everything. Add a threat to the scheme. Add a delay counter. I am in hero form. So Absorbing Man is going to attack. Because he is stunned, it just gets rid of the stun. Now we go to the minion. The minion will attack. I'm going to choose to just take it to the face and not defend. So he does his two damage to me. Taking Doctor Strange down to seven. Now we deal myself an encounter card. These have all been bad. I've been kind of handling them other than these encounters. All right. A new environment. So... Uh, when an environment enters play, discard each other environment card in play. So this one is going to come into play, the abandoned facility. It also has surge, which means I deal myself another encounter card. I'll put that right here for now. All right. So the force response is this from the scheme is the abandoned facility comes into play and now... After Absorbing Man makes an undefended attack against me, I discard one resource icon from my hand. Two, if this is up to five. Hopefully, I think I'm knocking him out on my turn. We will see. Let's see what this other counter is. Fear of Cain. Obligation. Only thing weird about putting random stuff in is I don't know about these. So, Obligation, you cannot attack Cain. Okay. Okay, I get it. So, this Obligation comes on me. And it just makes it to where I cannot attack Kane. Alright. I won't attack Kane. Now if I wanted to, I could go an alter ego for him. And as an action, I could discard a random card from my hand to discard this obligation. Alright, my guy just won't attack Kane. I'm not attacking Kane. I'm attacking an Absorbing Man. I mean, I guess this is one of those weird things. Where if I was truly playing this game right, this would say I, I can't attack the villain. So... We know I got him knocked out for my turn, so I'm going to play this like it says I cannot attack Absorbing Man. Even though it's not what it says, I get it, story doesn't make sense, but for some reason I'm, I'm going I'm to play like an obligation that I am in fear of Absorbing Man. So that was because of all the encounter phase, so we got my turn now. And I am in fear of Absorbing Man. He is lucky I fear him. I'm going to go ahead and bring Clea out. Pay with it with the power of protection, which is like we played earlier, since she's a protection card. This counts as two. I'm going to have Clea exhaust to take out the time displaced soldier. She'll take her one consequential damage. Since I'm in fear and I want to get rid of this, It's one of those questions I always have, but I just feel like I'm still doing it right. Before I do anything, I'm going to use this because I can only use it as a hero resource to bring out the Sanctum Sanctorum. Now, it's an alter ego action. This means I can't do the access on an alter ego, but I don't see why I couldn't spend the resource to bring this into play. So I bring, I use the Eye of Agamotto to bring in the Sanctum Sanctorum. I'm going to flip to my alter ego form. I'm going to exhaust Stephen Strange to heal for three, put me at 10. Guess if I would have been smart, I would have had him attack and take out the time displaced soldier and then Clea could have done additional damage to Absorbing Man, but eh, I'm not smart. So I'm going to do this, discard a random card from my hand.
which is my Magic Blast. But it gets rid of the fear I have for Absorbing Man. And then now I'm going to exhaust the Sanctum Sanctorum, because I'm in Alter Ego form as an action, exhaust the Sanctum Sanctorum, shuffle a spell card from my discard pile into my deck and draw a card. So I'm going to shuffle the one I just discarded, Magic Blast, into my deck. And then I draw a card, <laughs> draw on the Magic Blast. I think there's actually two in there, so I think my odds are pretty good because I didn't see the other one in there. Luke Cage attack, doing two damage to Absorbing Man. Actually, hmm, it's just pointless to do the damage to him. I am going to go ahead and thwart instead of doing the damage with Luke Cage. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to do that. That's fine. All right. So... That will consequential damage to Luke Cage. I really should have done the damage to him. I just don't see the point. I should be able to knock him out. Uh, I guess it don't really matter. I don't see how he can do. Oh, I already did it. I already did it. We're just going to do it. We're going to do it this way. All right. This way we're going to do it. All right. So, yes. We go back to the top. And size six. I already have the Crimson Band, so I should have more than enough to damage him. So I am going to discard this card. We draw up to my hand size of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Adds one threat to the scheme. Adds a delay counter. So now he's at his five, so he can start doing all of his stuff there. Um, he is going to scheme. Oh, no, yeah, I'm definitely glad I did that because it would have been three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, okay, now, I mean, I don't think there's any plus fours, so now, yeah, guess not. Yeah, never mind. Well, we already did this. We moved on. We already revealed cards. All right, so two, three, four means he's going to... Eight, nine, all right. Yeah. All right, so we do ourselves an encounter card and we flip it up. Oh, oh crap, I might just lost. Hold on. All right, sorry, I'll show you what it is. It's when revealed, the villain schemes. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh man, yeah, I might have just lost. <laughs> Guess I shouldn't have done the whole Fear and Kang thing. Uh, I have something that could stop it if I was in hero form. Yeah, well, I just felt like I should have played that way. It just, it sucks. Um, but it just didn't make sense. Like, I fear Kang, but I'm not even fighting Kang. Um, so I just would have played it that way. Oh, well, just take a lot. Well, I guess, let me see. I mean, odds are he is going to. So two... 8, 9, 10, 11. So, yep, if this is two or more boost, then I lose. Oh, hey! It's a zero, actually. So, actually, he just adds only two. All right. Well, I did not lose. Let's knock him out, because that almost just happened. I don't know how many times, more than once, this card has lost me the game. Just because... Yeah, villain schemes, and you just don't do the count on it. Anyways, let's just finish him off. All right, we go back to the top. Uh, just flip this to my hero form. Well, why not? Just because we can do more stuff. I'll exhaust the Sanctum Sanctorum. Just shuffle this spell back into my deck. I know, I'm doing stuff that I just don't even need to do. Switch over to hero form. Just because I can. I have Agamotto. Do Master of the Mystical Arts, which lets me pay the printed cost of the top card invocation deck and then resolve its special ability, then place it back on top. So I will pay two to do Crimson Bands of Sidorok. 
which stuns an enemy and deals seven damage to an enemy, which is enough to knock him out. All right. Whoo. Yeah, I still kind of like him. It's just fun to play. It's fun because of this deck. I like the way it just does stuff. Um, I think I like him as protection. I mean, I want to try him as other stuff. I just really like him as protection. Uh, I do need to take cards out of my deck, though. Um, but I can do that on the side. That one card just does not work in this deck. It worked for Captain America. did not work for this one. So I need to put it out here so I remember to get rid of it out of the deck. And really, I'm thinking this one, too. I never really need to draw cards. And I don't really defend, so... I might get rid of the unflappable, too. Um, yeah, I might look at replacing those. Well, that was fun. That was cool. Good test. Did let me know what I need to remove from my deck. Uh, I like doing the randoms. Uh, I do want to do the story. I just... I don't want to solo the story. I'd rather play the story and... Um, with multiplayer. So I could have done that, but who knows? I got a lot of people at the shop now who are enjoying this game and who are getting into it. So I should be able to get it to the table more with other players, but all right. Thank you for watching and have a great day.